welcome the LEGO Lord of the Rings fans to our final episode from the first wave of the Lord of the Rings sets. I'm your host, Goldberg09, and today you have come to another great gathering of nerds as we look at the LEGO Orc Forge. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's not the Tower of Orthanc, not yet, but as always, I am busily constructing it. So, let's go ahead and take a look at this awesome set. Alright, here is the Orc Forge. And unfortunately I've not saved the best for last, but it's still a pretty cool set, and it's really good for what it is. So, um, here are some specifics. It sets, it's set, uh, 9476. The recommended age is 8 to 14, but no one cares about that. It contains 363 pieces, and retails for $39.99. So we're out a little high for a price per piece, but we do get some awesome pieces in here. Most notably, a light brick and it is a new color so that's probably the main reason why it's a little more expensive and you get a few other rare and uh, large pieces but of course we'll be taking a look at all that um, so this is the only set in the first wave of Lord of the Rings sets and I think in total so far where there are no good guys this is the only set that is all bad guys. You get four bad guys, which are two orcs, an urukai, and lurks. You can't see right now. There he is. So um, some people won't really like that, um, but uh, it is a nice way to increase your stock of bad guys and to get a pretty cool set. So um, you do get one instruction manual. So. As for numbered bags, oh, the reason to have all this is because it includes a light brick, and they have it in tons of different languages there. So you get one, two, three numbered bags, and you can see which you, what you build in each bag here. There you go. So bag one, you build this area. Bag two, you build this, and the bottom part of this. And bag three is probably my favorite because you build the chute, the uh, little podium here, and of course this, which is the best looking part of the set. And of course you get the orange brick separator, as you can see here. So, um, let's step through here a little bit. Fairly fun build, nothing too exciting, but course the minifigure checklist and the screaming kit. So let's go ahead and take a look at the minifigures. We'll start with the most boring minifigure which is um, Mordor Orc. Now at the time this came out this is the only set that you could get Mordor Orcs in but of course now we can get them in Battle of the Black Gate, Attack of the Wargs, Pirate Ship Ambush, and I think, oh uh, Tower of Orthunk you can get one. So they're pretty common nowadays, but still, you can never have enough orcs because, um, well, there's uh, a few, well, there's about uh, 10,000, I, I believe, well, 10,000 orc at the uh, Battle of Helm's Deep, and I believe about 100,000 orcs at the Battle of Palenar Fields, and then, of course, a bunch more at the Battle of the Black Gate, so we're probably looking at around 200,000 or so. If you know how many orcs there were in total, or a rough estimate, please tell us in the comments. So we get the uh, standard face for the orc, which doesn't really look complete without the hairpiece. And some back printing on the head there. He comes with a shovel, and we'll see why he needs that shovel in a little bit. Fairly nice printing on the torso there, he's got some toothy looking stuff out protruding out of his uh, garments there. And some nice back crane. So the next orc is a little more complete looking because he has this awesome hairpiece, which I believe only comes in this set in Attack of the Wargs at the moment. It's very similar to the one that we see on the Moria orcs, which is this one here. But as you can see, the ears are not green. So it's a very nice looking hairpiece. It's similar to the elvish hairpiece that we see because as we all know orcs are evil elves. And that fits nice and 
snug on there. Other than that, this work is exactly the same as the other one, except that he does come with this hammer. And we'll see why he uses that in just a little bit here. Next we have our White Hand of Saruman Urukai. And as you can see, he's different from the ones that we see in Urukai Army and the Battle of Helm's Deep because his armor has the White Hand of Saruman printed on here. So that makes him a much nicer Urukai. Uh, kind of wish we got that in all of our Urukai, but um, it just makes another reason why you want to get this set. So, uh, just on the shields and the helmet do we see this, you don't see it on the armor. And you do get a few extras which I will show you. And of course you can now get this armor in the Tower of Orthonk as well. But not quite as much as we see in here. Here's the helmet. And of course that is printed on there, that, that is not a sticker, there are no stickers in this set. Double sided face. And I'll go ahead and take his armor off. So, some fairly nice printing. It's the same that we see in those two aforementioned sets. And he also comes with his Urk sword. And we do get a few more of those swords. Oops, later on in the set. Put his armor back on here. This. And this. Okay. And our final minifigure is Lurtz. He's probably the best minifigure in the set. Um, comes with this nice hairpiece. Same as we see on Lucius Malfoy. And Gandalf the Grey in different colors of course and there's the rest of him now he does have a double sided face and he's been working out obviously very nice painted torso there and some nice back printing So overall, a very nice minifigure, and you can dress him up in some armor and with some weapons, and we'll show that in a little bit. So we'll be back in just a moment with the set. Alright, so here's the rest of the set. So as you can see, it's fairly large. Yes, that is the Tower of Orthonk over in the corner there. So I'll go ahead and show you some of the mini builds first. First of all, you do get some extra armor here. You get the uh, chest piece, the extra helmet, and the extra shield, so you can dress up Lurts. And we will do that in just a few minutes. You get this anvil, and the armor fits nice and snug on there, so this guy can hammer away at it. And the final mini build that we get is this little, I want to call it the smelting pit, I'm not positive, that is the correct term, so you can tell me if I'm wrong in the comments, and as you can see we do get two extra Uruk swords here, so even with just this one set you can get quite a nice little armory going, and you do get some of those translucent orange pieces at the bottom there. So there are your mini builds, and um, here's the rest of the set. We'll kind of take this in the step-by-step -step process of making Uruk weapons. So we'll start with this bucket here, take it off the hook, and inside you see we get these silver pieces which are very nice, because they don't have studs on the top. So we have a different looking piece. I'm not sure if these are new. They are new to me. So you can tell me in the comments once again if they are new. Or if we have seen them before. And there's... I believe it came as six, but I think I'm missing one of those. And they go in this bucket here. And what we do... Is we stick it on that hook right there. I'll try to do it with one hand. I think I'll be able to no, give me just a moment. So I can do that. There we go. So now it's on there nice and secure. And what you 
do is you turn this knob right here at the back and that spins the bucket up and down and also this wheel right here so nice little function there Move it out of the way. and this uh, little windmill piece is supported by two large Technic beams those are all one piece and then this smaller gray one right here so nice little function there and then what you'll do is you'll take the bucket off of the hook if you can there you go and move it up here now let me pause in our process for a moment here that is a printed brick which is very nice and this is very loose on here it's only attached by a stud at the bottom there and that is a burp in the background there big ugly rock piece I'll be back in just a moment. Alright, so what you do is you pour the silver down this chute right here, which does move up and down a little bit. And I'll try to do this perfectly. That was pretty good, just one of them is spilled. So the chute works pretty well. Most of the silver gets in that pot there. I did forget to show right here, there's a little ladder does move up and down and once again that's a printed wooden piece there so that's how the orcs get up so um, then you take this pot off and this fit nice and securely there because of that and that and you'll move it here so I guess uh, Lego wanted to get the feeling of heat across as well as light so they included this light up brick. Let me get to turn this off real quick so you can appreciate it a little better. There you go. And that is a, I'm pretty sure it is a new colored uh, light brick. Because now when we see it in a golden yellow color. And you get the fire pieces in there as well. And it does kind of shoot out a little laser there. Through this gap right here. And what's it? Destroy the camera lens. So, okay. so it's a very nice little addition that I like very much. Oh, and the way you achieve that is by pressing this knob right here. So it's probably my favorite feature in the set. Now there is one more thing to show you here. And if you remember, the orcs are kind of born in these pits. So this guy can dig. Sorry about that. You can kind of dig out an orc like this. And out comes lurks. And as you can see, this rock piece here is just kind of attached by these two studs. And those are all flat tiles inside there. and easily back in there. And the way that you push him out is with this little gap right there. You can kind of see his legs sticking out. I'll show you one more time. You can also just take the rock piece away first and then push him out. Alright, I'm back and I've got the ratings and maybe some building tips. So, um, this is by no means my favorite Lord of the Rings set. In fact, this is probably my least favorite set from the first wave of Lord of the Rings sets. I think I'll say my second least favorite because I'm just not crazy about uruk Attack or uruk Army. Because after you build the Battle of Helm's Deep, that's going to be a bit of a boring build. Um, really the only reason that I'll get that is for Amir, then the Rohan Soldier, yeah, and I guess it's a nice set. But, um, you know, this one you get the light-up brick here. I can't really see that there. But... And you get a few functions. You get the winch here, uh, the chute, 
and then of course alerts comes out of this block piece right here and of course you get the white hand of Storm on uh, armor and helmet and alerts so um, it is a fairly nice set but um, it's not a location that we see very much in the movie um, so that's probably why I'm not crazy about it that's also I'm not crazy about the pirate ship ambush set but anyway as for building tips um, just get more or more orcs uh, you can get those in the battle of the black gate which I will be building soon attack of the wargs um, tower of orthonk and then more Urukai from the Tower of Orthok, Urukai Army, Battle of Helm's Deep. And uh, another character that you might want to add is Saruman, because he visits the Book Forge frequently. So, um, that's about all I can offer for the building tips. Uh, Lego did a good job because um, the Orc Forge is really a very large area. Um, because the orc, I mean, really, there's many orc forges because they're in these pits underneath the Tower of Orthonk, and there's a sneak preview of that. So, um, yeah, they combined a lot of stuff here. They combined this uh, windmill looking thing, uh, the smelting area, the melting area, and I don't think I'm getting these names right, so you can tell me in the comments what they're really called. And then, of course, the uh, Urukai birthing pits. So LEGO did a good job at making a large thing small, but I guess that's what they're really uh, noted for. But um, they did an exceptionally good job in this set. And so, I mean, there's really no reason not to like this, other than the fact that there are better, more interesting sets that depict scenes that are longer, uh, more interesting, and more important to the overall storyline. So if you have, I believe this retail for, yes, $40. If you have $40, I would recommend uh, getting Shelob Attacks, Gandalf Rise, the Wizard Battle, getting like three or four smaller sets, or something like Attack of the Wargs, which is just $10 more, Fleeing from Rookwood Spiders, Escaping the Barrels, I believe was $40, 40 or 50 I'm pretty sure Escape in the Barrels was 40 so if you're going to go between the Orc Forge and Escape in the Barrels, I would definitely recommend Escape in the Barrels over this one, unless you just love Orcs and you love this scene. So as for the ratings, um, the builds, you do get some interesting pieces, you do get this light up brick and who doesn't like those, and I believe that isn't a new color. Um, you get the nice pot here, you get those new silver pieces. Once again, tell me if those are new or not. I'm not really sure. Get the nice bucket here. The printed wooden pieces, like this one here. You get two of those. The large Technic beams in the back there. The burp. Uh, these little, I don't know, they look like scaffolding or something. And of course all the armor, shovel, hammer. And so for the build, I will give it a seven. Um, other than the light up brick, none of those are really, wow, that's a great piece, because we see, well, I guess these are pretty cool, but you do see those in the Tower of Orphunk as well. So I'll go for a 7 for the build. For the playability, there aren't too many action features. You get the winch, the chute, the light up brick, and the uh, birthing pit rock piece thing. So I think I'll stick with a 7 for the playability and brick film value. And finally for displayability, um, this goes good with the Tower of Orthon because they're both in the same area, but it'd be great if someone could figure out a way to put this lower than the Tower of Orthon because as I mentioned before, these are deep in the ground in large pits. So that would be a real neat display, but by itself, um, yeah, I'll stick with the 7. So 7 across the board for build, play, and display. So, as I said, it's not a set that I'm uh, crazy about. 
they're definitely much more interesting Lord of the Rings sets, but it's still a nice way to increase your Orc and Urukai army, get some cool armor, and make a fairly nice set. I believe, yeah, this, this comes apart pretty easy here, if you would want to do that. And that's really the only area that easily comes apart. So, this has been another Bilbo Brick 09 review. Uh, as it stands now, as far as the Middle Earth sets go, I've done all the Hobbit reviews. And for Lord of the Rings, I just have to do the Tower of Orthonk and the Pirate Ship Ambush. It'll probably be a while before I get to the Pirate Ship Ambush because uh, I just spent, well, $200 on the Tower of Orthonk. And I believe that is a much better set than the Pirate Ship Ambush. So don't look for that anytime soon. But the Tower of Orthonk, um, hopefully in a few weeks or so, um, it may be on there now. So check and, make, check and uh, see because it's going to be an awesome review. And we're going to have our friends Andrew19, Andrew30, and Thane with the second come on there and guest star once again to offer their helpful insight. So, and in the meantime, check out other Lord of the Rings and Hobbit sets and some of my awesome stop motions. So, thanks for tuning in. Happy building. And here's the